Hi everyone, this is Miss Moriarty and I'm here to discuss with us our topic 9.3, which is all about the greenhouse effect. Uh, so here, right guys, we talked a little bit about some of these greenhouse gases um, in class today. You do need to be familiar with the principal greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, uh, water vapor, nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons, and actually I have missing here. Please make sure to add in your notes ozone as well. We know that while water vapor is an actual greenhouse gas, it actually doesn't contribute significantly to global climate change because it does have a short residence time, uh, but it does still have the ability to hold on to heat while in the atmosphere. We also know it's the greenhouse effect that enables life on Earth, right? If we didn't have the greenhouse effect, then Earth would be one big giant ball of ice. So it's going to help warm Earth's surface. So some of the principal greenhouse gases and where we know they come from, uh, carbon dioxide we know comes from fossil fuel combustion, uh, decomposition in the soil, as well as deforestation. Methane, CH4, comes from natural gas extraction, uh, combustion, um, animal agriculture, uh, anaerobic decomposition, as well as the permafrost layer found in the tundra. Nitrous oxide, N2O, is found in agricultural soils. It tends to come specifically from the denitrification of nitrate, especially in soils that are either overwatered uh, or over fertilized by synthetic soils. We know that our chlorofluorocarbons and refrigerants as well as aerosol products are also very potent greenhouse gases. And water vapor, H2O, um, it will come from evaporation as well as transfer transpiration from plants. Uh, some important pieces to know about those greenhouse gases besides where they come from is their potential to contribute to global warming. So CO2 tends to have a global warming potential of one. So we kind of use that as a reference point um, to compare other greenhouse gases and their impact on climate change. So if you look at the table here to the left, you'll see water vapor doesn't really have much of a global warming potential, uh, while CO2 we said has a global potential of one. And then from there is methane followed by nitrous oxide, and then it is chlorofluorocarbons that have a tremendous global warming potential. So that means that they have the ability to absorb lots of infrared radiation during the time in which they spend in the atmosphere. Now, here's just a nice little diagram. Make sure in your notes that you are writing down or typing in what is said in this diagram here. And we kind of saw that in the video we watched as a class today. We know that UV rays in the form of photons, right, are gonna enter uh, from the sun into the atmosphere, penetrate the atmosphere um, and reach Earth's surface. Some of that radiation is gonna be absorbed by Earth's surface and warms it. Some may be reflected by Earth as well as the atmosphere back into space. Some of that radiation that gets um, absorbed will then be re-radiated back to the atmosphere where we find our greenhouse gases. And at that point, it has now changed from UV rays to infrared radiation. And it's our greenhouse gases that re-emit right, that infrared radiation or heat um, in all directions by the atmosphere. And that's what's gonna naturally warm Earth's surface. And so here's just another breakdown of kind of where that energy is going. So we know not all of the incoming solar radiation is gonna reach Earth's surface. Some of it is reflected back into space by clouds and the atmosphere, while some is also absorbed simply by atmosphere as well as clouds. Um, the rest is going to reach Earth's surface, and we know it can either be absorbed or reflected depending upon the albedo. So the darker uh, the substance or surface, the lower the albedo, the more um, sunlight it's going to absorb and release that infrared radiation, making it feel warm. While surfaces that are lighter and have very high albedo are going to reflect that sunlight, it's going to go directly back into space or into the clouds, and greenhouse gases will then absorb it. But in that surrounding area, it's going to feel much cooler. 
Hence why in the poles, right, North and South Pole has lots and lots of snow, right? Snow is a very light color, very high albedo, lots of reflecting light in the poles. And that's what's going to maintain that cooler temperatures that we see there. All right, guys, this is the end um, of this video. Remember, tomorrow we're going to continue with our simulating greenhouse effect. And then we're going to discuss the implications as what happens when we increase then greenhouse gases and what effect that might have.